Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. Last one for today, it's going to be Laude vs. The Sponge on Wanderlust. Wanderlust, as I mentioned before, is one of my favorite maps. And we have seen Laude and The Sponge earlier today as well. So we'll see them again, although apparently this is a bit later. The Sponge was rusty in the last game. We'll see how they play in this game. Let's go. So the Sponge on the west side of the map going for Kalikibot Factory, while Laude on the east side of the map going for Heavy Tank, as they generally do. Except for the small fleeing with hovercraft some time ago. Lowry really enjoys their heavy tank factory. That's that's their thing. They've always been big on the heavy tanks. While on the other hand, Cloakie is just a generally reliable map in this or sorry, reliable factory in general, and particularly on this map. But this map is vehicle pathable. It's definitely you can go up all the ramps with vehicles. And you can't there's no difference between the cliffs. Like you can't go any way up or not the cliffs without bots. Although I think bots bots can go up this cliff. And vehicles cannot. Um, yeah, the vehicles cannot go up this cliff, but bots can. But bots can. And that also goes to the one to the south, the corresponding one to the south. Otherwise, the rest of the ramps are basically both bot and vehicle passable. However, Kodachi's being built up, and Kodachi's are. They're death to raiders. But at this point, it doesn't matter because the sponge managed to catch out Lowry's Kodachi. That is a massive blow at the start of the game. Yeah, as Lowry points out. <laughs> well, shit. Lowry does not want that to happen. Kodachis are quite expensive, like 300 metal or so. Sorry, 180 metal. But still, they are... Sorry, Panthers are 300 metal. Kodachis are 180 metal. You don't want... You want to have every one of those glaives dead to that Kodachi. But unfortunately, it retreated into the Sponge's territory, not out of it. At this point, the Sponge quite a ways ahead as a result of that. And gotten quite a bit of confidence as a result. Moving in with the glaives, gonna try to attack again. Losing one of their glaives, actually two of their, no, one at least, possibly two. Like, glaives are generally countered by Kodachis. It's just that particular one got kind of unlucky, and, okay, only one. Only one glaive dies, and the sponge continues to expand over the north and south. Nice split up, we often see this. When commander goes in one direction, workers go in another direction. Lowry not doing this. Lowry still getting their first welder up, actually. Their first welder, one second left, building some... Defenses over here, and then probably gonna expand over to the yeah, expanding over to the north afterwards. Gonna have to go around this way though. Welders cannot go up this cliff right here. You have to go around. Gonna have to do this. Can't do this. And at this point, the sponge trying to find some weak points. And the Kodachi is still a threat. It can't be dealt with directly. Those glaives cannot attack it directly. But everything else, however, the Kodachi's actually the glaives can deal with the Kodachi. If not, if it's not there. The Glaives have free reign in that area, or very nearly free reign. Now continue to build up Glaives, the Sponge at this point building nothing but Glaives, and Loudly going for a Banisher instead, losing another Kodachi! Wow, that was a nice flank by the Sponge. But a Banisher coming in, that will probably end the Glaives. Banishers, a homing missile, riot unit, yeah, that... If the Glaives are at all clumped with each other, they will die. They will die swiftly. And they will die conspicuously. Because that's what Banishers do. They make an example of Raiders. They don't just kill them, they make an example of them. Like, they kill them and then they string them up in the town square. So that every other Raider knows this is not a place for Raiders. Anyway. Actually, that, that joke would be funny with, with the shield bot factor because all their Raiders, well, all their units in general have criminal names. Doesn't work so much for Cloakybot Factory. Because it could have said, there's no place for bandits here. This town doesn't welcome bandits, but it doesn't work for glaives. Darn it. And now it's too late, I've used up that joke. I mean, maybe if no one's if no one watches this, I might be able to use it again later with Shieldbot Factory. But I don't think we're gonna see a Shieldbot versus Heavy Tank game. That I mean Cloaky versus Heavy Tank is rare enough, and the Glaives coming in here, not getting killed yet. That banisher hasn't even been built up. Fifteen seconds left, and the glaive has really nothing left to fear. There's one Lotus, which is out of the way. Oh, there's one Defender, too. So it has one thing left of here. That did kill it. But still, the Sponge getting the economic advantage. And that is... Hmm. Yeah, the Sponge is kind of ahead. Except for the loss of the Glaives. That, that's a big deal. And now that the Bandit... Now the Banisher is out. The Sponge is aware the Banisher is out. They can build up things other than... They can build up things other than Glaives. They're clearly choosing not to. They can. This is a possibility. But they... They aren't. 
I guess they might just try to bait this out, try to kill, get the Banisher to kill one of the Glaives, and then while it's on reload, which incidentally is four seconds, so not very much time, run in with the rest of the Glaives and try to kill it. But yeah, that's not enough time to kill it. So right now, there's this Banisher, there's the Commander over to the south, there's no Kodachis in play yet. All the Kodachis so far have been killed. And the Sponge continue to just build up more and more Glaives. Going for an Air Switch, however, so we will see some Bombers coming in here to try to get rid of the Banisher directly. Not sure I agree with this, Copperheads are pretty powerful anti-air. But then again, Copperheads aren't being built. And Lowry's force has been kept pretty small this entire game. So it looks like it is going to be, say, Lowry just moving in south side, taking a lot of metal, metal spots on the south side. And the Sponge has kind of stagnated their expansion. They're taking the entire west side, they're, they're taking the south side a bit. They aren't really taking the center or the north. They have one Conjurer right here to the north. Copper's a terrible AA, really? Huh. 1,200... 81... Oh yeah, I guess that... Yeah, it is kind of dependent pretty much on being out of the way, and... Ravens move very quickly. But yeah, the Banisher does go down. Made an example of a few Glades, but not all of them. The Kodachi should be able to kill the last one, but even then, that Banisher died. The Sponge's strategy actually worked out. Happened to work out when I was checking what Copperheads do exactly statistically, but it still worked out. Yeah, the Sponge, able to go to that next Kodachi, loses a couple Glaives in the process, but still, that's actually worth it. I mean, Kodachis are worth about three Glaives, and two Glaives have died in No Man's Land. At the same time, we have... We have the Airplane Plant being built up. Twelve seconds left for that, with another Caretaker on top of this. And with 30 Metal Income, the Sponge can definitely afford that Caretaker. So ultimately, that Airplane Factory, along with the Clickbot Factory and the Caretakers, that's going to use up all the Sponge's Metal... So the Sponge being economically head is going to be worth it. Whereas Lowry, on the other hand, having gone heavy tanks means that they're going to need to get about plus 30, plus 35, maybe plus 40 before they can really reliably build the heavy tank units. Like the Reapers. And more Banishers, I guess. But yeah, Reapers are the big one. But that requires about 35 metal or so to be done at a quick pace. Because Reapers cost... Yeah, they cost 850, so it's like 30 seconds even at 35 metal. Or 30-ish metal. That's still half a minute. That's still a lot of time. And Lowry only has 26 and no caretakers. They, no, no, no. Wow, surprisingly, no caretakers. They have some welders being built around. Their welders going over to the north side of the map. The sponge also expands to the north side. But yeah, the sponge doesn't need as much in the way of money. And they do have quite a lot in the way of money. And now they're no longer accessing. But yeah, Lowry just now getting up to about 30 or so. Just getting to the point where Reapers are viable. Getting caretakers. And that will be in about... Half a minute, they'll be able to use them. That's a good point, yeah. Snipers are actually a good idea. That I'm a bit surprised we don't see that, but... Then again, that's... I don't know if people really think about that. I mean, snipers are an important thing against heavies. They're Cloakie's anti-heavy unit. You see them a lot more recently against shields, because they're very useful against felons. But yeah, against heavy tanks, they're... They'd be a very good choice. That's very true. But instead we see that Ravens are the option, which will be useful at the beginning, and possibly get rid of Lowry's commander, which... I mean, the Sponge knows exactly where Lowry's commander is, so at least that can be done fairly effectively. On the other hand, the Sponge's commander is quite safely nestled inside the Sponge's base. No real risk there, but yeah, Lowry's commander, pretty much gonna get killed right away. Yeah, this is... This is actually two... Well, four Ravens. Yeah, that's enough. That'll, that'll do it. Three Ravens will do it, but just in case one of them dies in the process. Lowry's commander goes down. None of the Ravens die in the process, actually. Or do they? Nope. They get away. Just barely, but they do get away. It's going to be well before they're useful again, because there's no repair pad. But still, they do get away, and there are still a lot of Glaives. However, a switch over to Zeus has happened. Not Sniper, but it's still something. And Banisher is starting to be built up a bit more. There's at least one Banisher. Yeah, there's one Banisher. Three Kodachis. But still, it is... Well, actually, at this point, three Kodachis, that's enough to get rid of the Glaze effectively. The Zeus are being built up, but there's no Sharpshooter. And there are Ravens, but that's about it. There's just Ravens being built up. Getting repaired, getting rearmed. And... They're, well, the Kodachis are still going to go down fairly quickly. The Glaze is able to kill them before they themselves die. Because the Kodachi is unable to retreat in time, but most of the Glaives do go down in the process. But once again, this is an area that neither player controls. So Lowry can't take advantage of having killed all of those Glaives to get the reclaim to be able to get their units faster. They don't have that. 
On the other hand, the sponge has tons of metal income. I mean, the Lowry actually is slightly ahead in metal income, but they don't have the energy and they don't have the caretakers. They are themselves going for an air switch, probably for Swiss. I don't think this can even come up in time, though. These Zeus's advance from here. They're going to be able to take care of the ban. Actually, the banisher. Yeah, the banisher won't, won't live that long for the Zeus's. And the banisher actually is able to help get rid of the raven. One of the ravens does go down as a result of that. But if the attack happens over to the south, I mean, Lowry, we saw in the first game today, and in general, Lowry likes to build a lot of defenses, kind of spread around. And it's difficult to attack defenses head on. Now, it was pointed out in the, re in the chat inside the replay that hammers are quite good. Like, hammers are quite good on this ridge, this whole area. And against defenses, they generally do well. Zeus is, however, able to go to the Banishers without too much issue, but yeah, the Defenders, still a bit of a problem. Lotus is still a bit of a problem. Not a huge problem. Zeus's are the unit to deal with this. They are called Assault Units for a reason. This is what Assault Units do. But still, there are a lot of defenses being built up, and Lowry has a lot of money to build them with. And there we go. There are the Swifts. Not quite so many that the Ravens can't do anything yet, but it's, it's starting to get there. It's going to be a bit of a problem. I don't see any Gremlins being built up. Purely Glaives and Zeus. At this point, it's probably okay. If if the sponge continues to push in, they should be able to deal enough damage that it won't be the biggest deal. But the Zeus is trying to hit the Swifts, cannot actually hit them. Shooting at them, but not accurate enough to hit them. The Glaives, on the other hand, should be able to, but they don't care. If there's enough Glaives, they're just going to take out the ground army. They're going to take out the expansion over to the north. Just swarm in there. Because that's what they do. They are swarmers. And over to the south side of the map, we see that Lowry hasn't really built up a whole lot. They have a lot of defenses, but not much else. Having lost their commander earlier, there's not really much build power down there. None of the welders have moved south. And actually, speaking of which, where all are... There are two welders, one of which over here, and the other one is... I don't even know where they... Oh, they're both over here, actually. They're both over to the northeast. So that is going to be a bit of a problem. In fact, that's probably going to... That's going to be game, I think. Yeah, the welders are getting torn apart. The glaives coming in here, tearing apart the last welder, and there are more ravens coming in. But really, that's not the biggest deal. These glaives are able to just tear apart. I mean, okay, this is actually not the best thing to attack. The glaives should be attacking the factories a bit more directly if they're going to attack the main base. But even then, the sponge has the economic advantage. They have the caretaker advantage. They could just send in ravens wherever they like to take care of all these metal extractors over to the south, and that would... That would deal a lot of damage. I don't see that happening, but that's that's something they could do. However, Banisher coming in here, trying to get rid of the Zeus's. Not the best option. Zeus's will basically destroy the Banisher without too much issue. So at this point, Lowry is basically done. There are some Gremlins up as well, just for good measure. Getting rid of these Ravens before they deal too much damage, but at this point, they don't have any good targets to fight. And that one didn't even manage to get any shots off anyway. Yeah, at this point, at this point, the sponge just wants to set up into a safe position that they can attack from and win the game. They don't want to attack again if it's not going to win in the game, because if they do that, that's just more reclaim for Lowry. At this point, Lowry only has, well, three welders, two of which are on the field, one in production, but they have 2,000 metal worth of reclaim inside their base. That is a lot of reclaim. And they have caretakers as well. The sponge does not want to donate any more to Lowry. If they can at all help it, they do not want to donate any more metal. And it looks like there is going to be... Let's see, what is there going to be on top of this? Not much at this point. Lowry is still trying to rebuild. And this point, Lowry figures out there's nothing they can really do. They just... GG. That's it. That's game. The sponge doesn't need, doesn't need to attack. Just... Just let Lowry surrender, and that's game. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me today. And yes, I realize this is an earlier time than usual. I'm planning on switching my time over. My weekend schedule's kind of changed for my own stuff. So 1 p.m. PST or 9 a.m. UTC, well, 9 p.m. UTC, not quite the best time anymore. 7 p.m. UTC is now the better time, which is 11 for me, 11 a.m. for me. So that is probably going to be a permanent change. I'm not totally sure. But yeah, for the next few weeks, I'm thinking it'll probably be earlier. Anyway, that's... Other than that, that's it. I mentioned before that I'm going to be doing Wednesdays instead of Tuesdays for the next few weeks as well. Though I will be doing one on Remembrance Day instead of Wednesday. So I'll be doing a cast on the 11th, not the 12th. 
Probably Red Baron again. Not quite sure what though. Something World War One related. And then after that, after that, on the week of the 18th and further, it's going to be Wednesday, not Tuesday. So it'll be Wednesday the 19th rather than Tuesday the 18th. And similarly for every following week. Anyway, that is otherwise it. So thank you for watching and have a good night, everyone.